So, <clears throat> back to the question of life. Um, as we covered before, there are uh, this major group of life called the eukaryotes, which have a nucleus. And that includes animals like you and me and anybody else that may be around and plants plants so specifically in this case we're talking about uh, green plants um, like uh, the animals they have a, a nucleus to their cell structure unlike animals they have also chloroplasts which enable them to do photosynthesis uh, this enables them to create an energy energy to live which also in the long run provides the energy for animals to live who eat the plants and then other animals eat the other animals and you know how it works. Another important aspect of plants are the cell walls and the cell walls are made of cellulose. Cellulose is basically what's left in the archaeological record of plants for the most part. It's an organic compound. It's a natural polymer. Its formula has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in it. And there's a lot of it in plants. Cotton fiber is 90% cellulose. So it's uh, very cellulose -y. Dried hemp is 45%, whereas wood is about 40 to 50%, depending on the wood. So this is what most of the structure of plants are. Uh, what enables a plant to stand up and what uh, makes uh, plant materials useful for making stuff out of. So other than light from the sun, plants of course need water. Um, so they tend to grow where there is water. It's a, it's a big thing. And of course in the Middle East there's not a lot of that. So part of the story of, of plants is how do you get plants when you're near somewhere where there's no water, not enough water. Um, so there's also the issue of preservation. Uh, this is possibly the oldest wooden artifact that we know of, and it's actually from Germany. Um, there is this bunch of spears, which I showed you, uh, I think, in the last lecture, actually from Germany, a uh, horse kill site. So they were used for throwing things at the fast moving horses um, 400,000 years ago. Seven of them, of, them, of them were spruce and one was made of pine and they're about two meters long and weighted towards the point. So they're probably for throwing at horses to um, eat them, uh, most likely. This is the Clacton spear. Of, of about the same date and probably uh, looked like the Shunigan spears when it hadn't rotted off at the end. Uh, here is a other amusing depiction of the Clacton spears in use by early English people. This is quite a famous very old artifact from Russia which I put here because it's kind of cool. But uh, Typically with wood, uh, you need to have some way of preservation. Uh, in Particularly in, in Europe uh, and in Asia, you will get things uh, kept because it's wet. Uh, like those uh, book pages and this lavatory seat from Roman Vindolanda in the UK. But in Egypt, what we mostly have to preserve wood is the dryness and so we get a lot of wood in Egypt where as soon as you get away from the Nile of course you have no rainfall and so you get a lot of wood being preserved and so this preserved wood is typically where we have more information about the wood being used in the Middle East than we do have from anywhere else um, which is mostly rotted away of course. And of course we have depictions of wood. And here is King Scorpion on his mace uh, with a nice wooden hoe which, which he's going to break the earth. So where people got their wood from, of course, is a big thing uh, to most of the major civilizations in the Middle East. 
Uh, in Mesopotamia, there was not a lot of wood, and so people like Gudi of Lagash records a trip to procure lumber for the temple, which they floated down the Euphrates. In particular, they wanted, when you're building big temples, you need big bits of wood to create the roof. And so for that, the, the local trees were, would not work very well. Also recorded uh, to have imported wood from the Indus Valley, which was used for furniture. This uh, clay tablet records a trip by Tiglath Pileser to acquire cedar in the Lebanon uh, for, again, roof beams. Also got some horses from there, although I don't quite know why. Um, here we have not only recording it, but actually recording what actually happened, which is very nice. And so here we have these people floating their boats down the uh, Euphrates or possibly Tigris at this stage, um, or up the Tigris, it's less likely perhaps, uh, with, but with all these big pieces of wood, which they're bringing to build a nice palace somewhere. This is uh, an important site in the Lebanon. It's a, a narrow pass near the Nar al Khalb uh, in the Lebanon, where people who come this way seem to have had a tradition of recording the fact they came this way. Uh, one of these was Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, um, who recorded that he came here. He came, he took trees, and he left. So recent uh, study of stuff, of course, involves identifying the wood through microanalysis. And here's an SEM picture of uh, Tilia europea, lime wood, which actually isn't actually found in the Middle East, but there are artifacts made of it, which we shall come to. So there are a couple of uh, types of, of wood you should be aware of. Uh, acacia is found quite widespread across the Middle, e Middle East and in Africa also. Um, it's uh, the most common type of wood you will find in Egypt. So if uh, so most artifacts you will find made of wood are most likely made of acacia, uh, including quite nice things like this chair. Palm trees are also used for wood. There's the dom palm and the date palm. The date palm would be more, more common in the ancient times. In fact, also in Mesopotamia it was a thing. Uh, they're not being used for anything here. They're just a backdrop for, for the design. But they can also be used to things, but not very good wood for like fine marquetry or something. But they could do a beam in a roof for you if they had to, as long as it wasn't too big a roof. Uh, the Zisiphus is uh, a nice tree. I, I particularly like the name, uh, which has a nice ring to it, Zisiphus. Um, makes quite small trees, but uh, you could make things from it. Also quite known as the source of... Uh, the crown of thorns, supposedly. And believe me, if you ever met a Sisyphus in the field uh, and had unfriendly relations with it, you will remember the vicious thorns that it has all over it. Carob. Carob is also across the Middle East. Again, it's not a very big tree, but you can make things out of it, which are quite nice. And of course you get beans, which people like to eat instead of chocolate. The sycamore fig is found in Egypt and the Levant. Uh, makes quite a nice tree. Uh, there's a couple of coffins from this chap, chap Seb Hepati. This chap. And uh, this is his outer coffin, which is made of sycamore fig. Tamarisk is quite nice. This is, again, a shrub or bush found widespread in the Middle East, in particularly in arid areas, but of course we have a lot of arid areas. This is one I pho photographed myself at to Tadmor, Palmyra. Um, whereas this is a rather nice headrest made out of tamarisk. And of course you have the woods which are not from Egypt, that you have to go somewhere else to get them. Um, and the most famous of these, of course, is cedar. You probably should have a red arrow because you should remember cedars. If only because the Lebanese would be very happy if you remembered the, the cedars. It's on their flag and everything. So this is a very strong uh, tree, uh, wood resistant to rot and insects. So it's, it grows in the mountains uh, between 1,200 and 2,000 meters, 
Uh, it's like a microcosm of the world, these mountains. The further up it, the cooler it is. And cedars in particular uh, are quite high up, but not so high up that it gets like really unpleasant. So one of the particular things people liked about cedar is because it was resistant to insects, it lasted a long time. And this is what they particularly liked in Egypt for their coffins, of course. So here is Sephekatepi again. Uh, his outer coffin is made of a wood that maybe could get filled with beetles. Um, but this being made of cedar, his inner coffin, and inside will be Sephekatepi himself, um, would be resistant to insect infestation. And so inner coffins, you'd really want them to be made of cedar. Otherwise, your mummy could become eaten by beetles or something. So pine trees uh, you get in Syria, um, the Pinus halepensis in particular. The, the Aleppo pine is uh, a quite important and we find it in Egypt. This one's actually a medieval piece of Aleppo pine uh, found in Egypt. And grows on the mountains below a thousand meters, so it doesn't compete with the uh, with the cedars. From Africa, we have Egyptian ebony, which uh, is the original ebony. Uh, the ancient Egyptian term hibni, uh, is, or eventually called ebony, of course, is actually applied to other species from other parts of the wor world. And what is Egyptian ebony is also called African blackwood or ironwood, and it comes from the Sudan and Ethiopia. And this is a very nice ebony person. It's a very happy chap. He's very glad to be made of ebony, it seems. It's a bit of a smile on his face. So, so remember I was telling you about linden uh, or lime, the lime tree, Tilia species. And this is actually a European tree. So what on earth is this doing in the Middle East? And, well, trade. Uh, these uh, very well-known portraits, uh, uh, mummy portraits, are put in Egyptian mummies in Egypt uh, in the Roman period. Of course, since this is the Roman period, and as I was saying earlier in the course, like near the beginning, the Mediterranean was a highway for trade and contact, and, and the Mediterranean would have been where lime trees would be taken from one side to the other to, because it's very good for making flat things. Uh, good for making shields, good for making musical instruments, and good for making flat boards that stay with a nice fine grain to do paintings on. Talking of shields, um, here are some other trees, not from Egypt, and we don't seem to find a lot of it in Egypt, but you can see it's found in Syria, Iran, uh, Anatolia, and um, this is what this is made of, and this is a shield, one of the few actual Roman shields known to actually exist in the physical world, and this was preserved in Duryeropos. Remember, uh, they made these, uh, filled the, the town with dirt uh, to preserve it from uh, invasion. Didn't work uh, in the end, uh, but in these very deeply buried contexts, they found a shield made of Platinus orientalis, the plane tree. Poplar tree, uh, also found in uh, quite widespread, uh, is also what the other shield, so a very important shield, also found at Dura Europos um, in eastern Syria, is made of the poplar tree. <clears throat> So, working with wood, very important. This is quite cool. It's a carpenter's toolbox from Thebes. Uh, I think it's at the British Museum. I seem to have forgotten where it's from. Um, so, axes are quite important. This actually doesn't look like a woodworking axe. It looks like a, a self-defense axe, but never mind. Uh, this is a big ads, and this is a small ads. So this is the thing that most woodworking was done in the ancient world. Um, the skill that was required would, of course, be something that they would need to acquire in order to use it. Here, however, we have an axe. And so you can see this chap is axe, uh, shaping this piece of wood with an axe. 
Here, however, we have uh, an ads um, oriented in the other direction, which is really specifically for cutting down and trimming wood. And so you can see that still here in 1966, or shortly before when Wolf took this photograph, uh, adzes were very uh, commonly used tools. Here is an ancient axe from Egypt, and you can see uh, this is uh, made of bronze, actually, and it's attached to this handle with um, uh, sinew here, not sinew, um, hide. So this hide, it's, it's raw hide, and so if you get it wet, it's very flexible. You wrap it around, let it dry, and it becomes very, very, and it shrinks as well. So it becomes a very firm grip. And of course, all these things would preserve well in the desert. This uh, chap is uh, a statue of, a, of someone called Anqua, the shipbuilder. And of course, he has uh, the tool of his trade of a shipbuilder. He has an ads over his shoulder. So uh, here we have another of these smaller adzes being used by a woodworker with very bad hair. Um, it's even worse than my hair at the moment, actually. So here we can see some very fine work being done with an ads uh, in, in Wolf's book again. And you can see very fine work is made with these things because adzes have existed since before things like the plane. Um, and once you have the skill to use it, then you can make very fine woodwork. And most ancient woodwork is made using a plane. However, they did invent a plane. Uh, which seems to be invented in about the Roman era. This is an early uh, Roman plane, uh, actually from the UK, uh, but they occasionally get them from um, the Middle East. This is, uh, remember the agricultural museum I went to and I showed you bits, shovels and things? They had some planes there as well. So a very simple plane could go back to Roman era, but doesn't. So chisels are very important. Here we have this chap making a hole with his chisel. And for chisels, you can develop uh, this sort of work. This is a mortise and tenon. And so a lot of this very um, good quality of, of woodwork was used in ancient Egypt, as we have lots of evidence for. Although the earliest, earliest use of the technique is seems to actually be from Germany, where, of course, they would have done this with axes and adzes quite easily. But here you can see from uh, Iran, this chisel has been used to cut out a, a mortise. So, and saws. So here's a saw, and here's a saw. So this, is a, this probably had a handle, which is gone, and this still has its handle. And here we have exactly that small hand saw being used to cut through uh, a piece of wood. You can see here, here's an adze. Quite nice. Here's another chap, again with the hair. I don't know what it is about these guys and their hair. They're obviously not paying attention to their grooming much. Uh, but he has possibly like the, the larger saw. And another thing they would do, it would be to tie the, the work, the wood that they're working on, to a post. This is quite commonly seen in these depictions. And here is another chap with much better hair who's doing uh, fine work on this object within with an ads this is a cool thing and you've seen these models uh, in Egypt before here's again that big piece of wood stuck into the ground that you tie the work to the wood that you're working on and this chap has tied this this big piece of wood to it and he has this saw and he's sawing through it also here you can see all these chaps with their ads is turning this big block of wood into a nice um, beam. And here's a, 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 this is a medieval uh, depiction of a saw being used with a monkey. I don't know why the monkey's there. But never mind. And here again, later from the Wolf book. And here's the Agricultural Museum in Syria with exactly the same thing going on. So we also have drills. This is a reciprocating uh, 
bow drill. Um, so you have the bow and you have the drill bits and these uh, the string goes around here and you push the bow backwards and forwards and this goes around one way and then goes back the other way, which sounds, uh, uh, yes, and there's an arrow. Uh, and here you can see it actually in action and this, this chap has a friend who's helping keeping the, the drill in position as he goes backwards and forwards uh, with the bow. And here it is in action. As you can see, it's a cordless drill, so it actually has a lot of flexibility. And the bow goes backwards and forwards, and that makes the drill go backwards and forwards. And the bit goes backwards and forwards inside the wood. And so it doesn't like go all the way around and make a hole like that. It just goes backwards and forwards, gradually chewing a hole through the wood. And it works perfectly well. And here we have some very fine carpentry being done with exactly this sort of thing. Using the, exactly the same technique, um, you can work a lathe. This is a lathe. And so you can see you have the piece stuck in between in this device. And here this chap actually has a long piece of, of rope or something with which he's pulling one side and the other to make this go around first one way and then the other way. Although a bow would also work, of course. And here this chap has his chisel and he's turning the, uh, the piece. Turning it like this. So you remember this, I showed you this quite earlier on. Ashurbanipal reclining in his garden. Uh, beautifully decorated garden, mostly decorated by the head of his enemy, which is over here somewhere. And all of this woodwork has been turned you can see. So all of this would be done by turning um, in a similar way. So that's it for the wood. Um, one of uh, the students has contributed the music today. So thank you, Pushar.